Hi guys, this is how to wet felt a scarf um, with wool roving strands. If you like this, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. And I hope you love this video. This is Stacy from Truly Majestic. Today we are going to make this beautiful, like sea colored sea foam scarf. And we're doing that out of pencil roving, which is a yarn that is not spun very much. It is spun and it is made out of wool, but it only has one thread. There aren't different strands of thread making up this. So first of all, I want to say that I am promoting another lady's channel at the moment. So this is part of her video. It isn't all of it. And if you want to see the full length video tutorial, you can check that in the description. Um, she is speaking all in Russian. So I'm just doing a very, very quick kind of explaining what's going on in English and she's got really amazing stuff so I do encourage you to go check out her original channel it is in the description and let's get to it so what we have here is a piece of plastic and we're going to be putting this pencil roving on the plastic there's an outline on it so this is the, the size of our scarf so she's made um, what sorry <laughs> what we have here is just like thin strands of wool roving pulled off until they are made into kind of pencil roving. So you can actually buy pencil roving or you can just pull off very thin pieces of a huge um, main strand of wool roving. So that's what you do. You can buy pencil roving or you can use, you can make pencil roving just by pulling off thin strands of different colors. So basically this is unspun pure wool beautifully colored yarn and we're going to be going around the outline and laying it out in the design that we want and there's going to be a few white strands that are going to go absolutely straight from end to end and that will kind of give us the basis for the framework of our scarf and so you can see this white um, strand underneath at the very edge and then over that we are going to be overlapping the rest of the colors of yarn. So we're going to have four um, lengths of straight white yarn and then overlapping the rest of these in little squiggly wiggles. So you could use a bottle cap or um, something else to keep these even because it will look, look a bit you know uneven if you just try to guess it probably. Or you can use anything you want. You can make these big, you can make these little, but they do need to overlap um, kind of closer together rather than further apart because if you have them overlapping and these wiggles are too big uh, you will have a very floppy scarf that isn't holding together well. So this size is a good little wiggly size to overlap. So now you can see we're taking the same color and we're going back up the other side overlapping the top bump every time we do this. So as we go on with that, I'm going to just quickly explain what's going to happen with the rest of the scarf and then I will probably let the music play and let you guys just watch it. So as we go on, you can see the overlapping is happening and the colors are going to be changing and then around the very edges of all of this scarf, we are going to put very, very thin wispy layers of wool roving in whatever color you guys prefer, but um, we're doing white up along the edges and then some bluey colors, sorry, white up along the lengths of the scarf and then some bluey colors along the where the tassels are. Right, so, um, and that, those wispy lengths all around the edges are to hold the scarf together. That basically gives you the framework of holding this scarf um, in form because if you only have these little wispies going round they tend to just flop over and they won't hold their shape very well so to make this scarf really hold its shape so you can see all these beautiful um, overlaps and wiggles it's important to put very thin threads of wool roving all along the edges like this right now and make sure they're all going in the same direction. You don't need to actually overlap them this way and that way. After that, you spray it down with a little bit of soapy water. 
and press it down just so these little wispy bits of wool aren't flying away because they do really tend to fly away. So basically this is just wetting everything down and making sure it's not flying away. And we're going to do the second half of the scarf now. So you can tell this is a very long scarf and we need to just kind of join our ends just by twirling them together. You won't even be able to see a join. And carry on with our little wigglies all the way to the other side. Same thing, up along the edges we want to do very thin wispy strands of wool roving. And then when it comes to this edge, like I said we're using different shades of blue wool roving. You can use whatever you like. You can do white, you can do black, you can do whatever you like. But the purpose of this is to really hold your scarf in form once it is finished felting. So after this, basically we're going to felt it. Wool roving felts by friction and you need to have sprayed the entire scarf down with a very light soapy water. Not too much soap, just lightly soapy water till the whole scarf is completely wet and then wrap it up in some bubble wrap and then we're just going to go back and forth rolling it, banging it, you can even jump on it. It just needs lots and lots of friction. I also want to mention at this point that wool shrinks and that is how it felt. It shrinks tightly together and usually the fibers also crimp. Um, a bit. So you might have some wavies and in this scarf you'll definitely see how the end product is more wavy and it is smaller. So you have to, when you're making the size of your scarf, what you want your end product to be, you definitely want to make it about one third bigger than what you want your end product to be because it will shrink down to um, two thirds of whatever size that you've started out with. So you'll have a little bit of shrinkage, which is normal. So at this point, everything is wet down. And we, you can um, use different things. This is like um, a tule, a kind of a net or mesh. And this works really good to kind of rough up your scarf gently without displacing all of these little delicate threads. So it adds some friction. You can also roll it up in some bubble wrap if you want because all of those little bumpies um, also create friction. So how you want to do the felting um, on this part is up to you. But I will say, and this is very important, that it will probably take you a good 20 minutes to 30 minutes of rolling this around back and forth, unrolling it, rolling it back up in different ways. Um, you can even take a sander to it, a, um, an electric sander, and very gently just vibrate over the top of this till you go all the way over the whole length of the scarf, but not too crazy because you will displace those really delicate threads. So you have to be very gentle with it until it finally starts shrinking and felting up. And then, like you see now, you can start getting a little bit more rough with it and then you really want to go at it um, with quite a lot of friction and a lot of banging and rolling to really get it felted together. It's important that your scarf is completely felted because if it's not, you will have a scarf that is shedding wool and especially since this one is so delicate by these fibers um, and threads kind of overlapping, it will start falling apart. So it's very important that you really, really felt this thing properly. And you'll be able to see when it felt. It will kind of change shape. It, the threads will get thicker because they have shrunk and gotten tighter together. So I'll let you see, watch the rest of the video. It's pretty self-explanatory. Like I said, I do hope you check out this lady's channel. She has got amazing things to do with wool roving. So usually my channel is all about arm knitting, but this one um, as well, because it's using wool roving, is all about felting. Wet felting is fun to do with wool roving as well. And like I said earlier in the video, please do like, subscribe, share, and comment. All of these things just give um, my channel a little bit of a high five. And that just helps me carry on with my work and be able to bring you guys these awesome little videos. I hope to see your projects. 
Um, you are welcome to leave a link to your project or your Facebook page or your Facebook post of what you have done or even a Pinterest post. You're welcome to leave those down in the comments. I would love to see your guys' projects. Enjoy your day and enjoy the rest of this video.